Now we'll go through some examples that you will find yourself using a lot. Okay, now I'm inside the project. Let's just go to this web project. Okay, so the first one is git log graph, which we already see, and which will show the branches and the one line, which will help us to condense all of the changes or all the history in one line. And if we take a look here, we only have the ID, the branch, then the message. And this is what you find yourself finding a lot because in general, this is what you are interested with. The message, the branch, and the ID and not the other stuff because I, if I just remove this graph and git log, you will get this order and date and we are not interested with that. But graph and one line, in, in this case, I don't have any graph. Okay, let's just go to bootstrap project and they'll type the same command and they'll go for merge. You see that graphs will show me the graph and the ID and the message. And if you want to show the whole commit history, but skip any merge, Okay, let's just see that. So I have graph and wall line and I don't want to get this merge. So for that, I will just use git log, then no merges flag. Okay, now if I'm finding for merge, I will not find any merge. And you see that in a real example, okay, let's just go vertical. I'll go to the desktop, desktop, open the project. I will show bootstrap and I will try to just show that it log merge. Let's use the graph merge. I'll try to get this, this history of this commit from December 22 to December 23. And I'll show you why. Okay. Let's just first get this commit git log. And I'll use since 22 December 2018 until 23 December 2080. Okay. And I'll use graph to show the branches. Graph. Okay. If we take a look here, I'm giving the merges. So this is the first one. So I'm giving this merge branch version four. Okay, now I will copy the same command right here and I will use it on the same project. So this is the bootstrap project and this is the bootstrap project or bootstrap repo. Okay, now if I copy that, but I will use no merge, no merges. Okay, now I'm not giving the merge. Okay, let's just rerun the same one, but without no merges, which means that I will get the merges. Okay, and the, the result is not the same. So this is the same project. The first one which has, which doesn't have this no merges, I get the merges, which is merge branch. But in this case, I'm not giving the merge. Okay, let's just move on to the next one. We'll close that. So for the next one, we'll try to show all commits that are in any local branch, but not in the remote tracking branches. And for that, I'll use git log. I just return to a simple project when I don't have too many commits and I'll use a git log then branches and not what I mean by not and we will find out why I'm using this not right here and the remotes and origin and this command or all of that will allow me to show all the commits that are in any local branch but not in any remote and this is why I'm using this not remote origin it will not show me the remote origins and if you see that okay, I will just use the same project again let's just go vertically again or I'm redoing the same stuff again so let's just go to project then bootstrap not bootstrap but web project okay I'm inside the same project let's just find out that okay I'm inside the, the same project and I will use this git log branch, not remote origin, and we'll see the result. And this is what I'm giving. I'm only giving the local branches, but not any remote tracking branch. And if I run a simple git log here, you'll find out that I'm giving everything, even the remote tracking branches. Now I will increase the complexity a little bit. Okay, let's just close that. And what we will do now 
is we want to track the evolution of a specific file. Okay, let's just move to Bootstrap. And we'll use an option which will help us to, as I already said, to the evolution of a specific file on a, and how it evolves over time. And I will just pick up a file. Let's just open this function.css. Go to the bottom. And I have a function, theme caller, theme caller level. And I want to see how this function evolved over time. And how people, when they are committing the changes for this term call of, for this function.css, how they change this term call of level. Okay, let's just find out how to do that. So for that, I will use git log, then the option L, which will help us to trust the evolution. And the basic syntax of that, or the arguments that this option needs, is a star, which will be, which will be a regular expression, and then a comma, and we'll have end, then a colon, then the file name, which means that the first one will try to write a regular expression for the star and the end to find out the same color level function. Then for the file name, we know exactly that we'll try to find how the color level is evolving through the file function.scss. Okay, let's just rewrite that. Okay, we'll go for git log, then hyphen L. And for the star, we'll write a simple regular expression. We'll go for theme color level. And I'll add a comma. Now we'll try to go to the end to limit because we only want to get this theme color level and not anything else. Okay, now I will go and I use this regular expression right here to limit everything. Now I had the colon because I want to find out the stem call of level inside this function.scss. Okay, now let's just add the file. Hit enter. And if we take a look here, you will see how this theme call of level is evolving over time. And we get the modifications of this function.css, not only the function.css, but the function theme call of level. And if we see here, we add color base in this modification, we remove it, we remove this color base and or we update the arguments. Then if we just go down a little bit on Tuesday, September 26, so we'll see that they remove this condition and we have some other, and we add some code right here. And we can get too many information about only a function and not the whole file. But if we wanna get the history, the history of the whole file, so you can just type git log, then function.scss. You can even use graph to see if there is any merge or something like that. You can go through the file, but it will give you all the changes, not only uh, for a specific part of the file. So to summarize, git log is very useful if you wanna just show the commit log and history, and you will find yourself using a lot the, the commands that I already showed you. And tracking the history is a skill that you will learn through experience and through working a lot with this git log command.